Good morning everybody. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to paint Oricon the Diviner for the Necrons. To begin we need to base coat in all of the silver details and for that I'm just going to use some lead belcher. When applying your lead belcher just keep the paint nice and smooth, don't over clog any of your details and just apply two thin coats. Once the lead belcher is all dry, we're going to then block in the other metallic details such as the metallic cape just here with some retributor armor. So same again, keep your paint nice and thin and just apply two thin coats over all of these metallic areas. So with all of the metallics base coated in, we're now going to give the whole thing an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade. When doing a large all over wash such as this, we can use a big brush. Here is a size 3 brush. But if you are using a big brush like this, just make sure that when you apply your wash, you don't apply it too heavily or else you're going to start actually clogging up detail and stuff. So just apply it on and if you see it pulling heavily anywhere, just work the actual wash around. So now that the Agrax is all dry, you can see that it gives you a lot of depth and definition in all of these deepest recesses, especially here on this gold paneling, because you've got all this nice recess detail that is all heavily shaded. However, it does obviously take away from the actual shine of the model. You know, it is now quite sort of grimy and dirty. So what we need to do is come back in, especially with the silver, and just start re-highlighting all of these silver panels. So for the first highlight, this is just that same lead belcher. I've thinned this down into a bit more of a very thin layer. I've whipped off the excess on my brush, and I'm just coming in and highlighting up this central part of the leg here where the light will be catching. So the best way to uh, imagine this is that this leg is a cylinder. Our light source is coming from the front. So the upper part of this leg will catch the light, leaving the sides on each side in shadow. When it comes to highlighting the tail just here, the quickest and easiest way to do it is to just get a dry brush. And we're just going to very lightly run this dry brush along this detail, catching all of the raised areas, leaving that wash in all of the recesses. For the gold details, we're gonna take some tainted gold from the Iron Painter. Now, this paint has more of a cold gold kind of appearance. It has more sort of blues and greens into it. But we're just going to use this as a edge highlight color. And we're just going to run across all of the edges of all of the gold details, again leaving that Agrax Earthshade in the recesses. With those first rounds of highlights all done, our next round is going to be using Shining Silver. Now this is going to be on the silver and the gold as well. When it comes to the flat panels on the legs, just use the shining silver in a smaller area than your lead belcher in the previous step. On the gold, just use the shining silver as a very small edge highlight, just where all the light is going to catch on the sharpest edges. So with the metallics all done, we now need to start work on this carapace here. So for that, we're going to base coat it with some Sotec Green. So this is just a standard base coat. Keep it nice and thin and apply two thin coats. With all of that blue base coated, we now need to give it a wash. And for that, we're going to use some Colia Green Shade and this is so that it, we can maintain the sort of blue-green appearance. With our Colia Green Shade, we can apply this fairly liberally over the entire surface. Just be sure not to let it pull too heavily in any one area. And if it does, just wick off your brush 
and you can just soak that up and move it all around. With that shade all dry, you can see it gives us a lot of our depth and definition back, especially in all of these recessed areas. So next up, we need to start highlighting it. And for that, our first coat is going to be with Techless Blue. So for our first highlight, we're actually going to do some dry brushing. So we're going to go across the actual surface in a sort of circular buffing type motion. So that way we're going to get rid of any of this tea staining that we have from our shade earlier. With the Techless Blue dry brush all complete, you can see we've got rid of pretty much all of that tea staining and we've also started getting some of those highlights. So our next dry brush is going to be with some Temple Guard Blue and we're going to basically repeat the exact same process but focus it more towards the actual edges of the carapace. And there we go, you can see we've now got those nice, quite bright, clean edges. So for our final edge highlight, we're going to mix the Temple Guard Blue with some white. And this is going to be a normal edge highlight with our paintbrush. And we're just going to be catching like areas such as here. And areas such as here. So just take your time with this step and be nice and neat and just go around catching all of those sharpest edges. With the edge highlights complete, our blue carapace is finished. So now really, there's only the glowing effects that are really left, so such as the orbs, the staff, and this cube here. And for all of that, I will be using the airbrush extensively, but you can do all of this without an airbrush. It'll just take a lot longer, and it'll be things such as glazing and wet blending as well. The first color that we're going to be using for the green details is going to be Calaman Green. And this is just going to be an all over base coat over all of the glowing details. For this step, just keep your paint nice and thin in your airbrush and apply multiple thin coats. So with that base coat of green all complete, we're going to move into some Warpstone Glow now for the next round of highlights. And for the actual weapon, I want to do this a little bit different. I want this central orb to be my brightest point. This is going to be my real prominent glow. And then we're going to work some of our glow around the orb, leaving these edges here, this dark Caliban green. When it comes to orbs such as this, just remember that when you do any form of glow effects, the center of the orb has to be the brightest point, and then we fade out the colors to this dark Caliban green around the edges. So we're going to reinforce this central orb, and then, like I say, with the actual weapon, I'm going to do a ring of glow around the actual orb itself, and then leaving the edges this nice dark green. As mentioned as well, when we're doing orbs, we want the center of the orb to be the brightest point. But always remember if you're using the airbrush and you're doing something close work like this to lower your PSI so you don't just absolutely spiderweb and splatter your paint everywhere. So with the warp zone glow all dry, you can begin to see what I mean. So if we have a look at one of these orbs, for instance, you see how we've got this central point of light here and then it's fading down into that Caliban green. So this will just be reinforced later on with the moot green and then the other colors. Equally, same with the box here. I'm going for a central inner glow here, leaving this part out here, the Caliban green. So the next color on our list is going to be our moot green, and this is going to be an even more centrally focused highlight. So on the orb here, we're going to focus it more in this general area, and then on these orbs, more towards the upper quarter up here. Thank you. 
After the moot green step, our final airbrush highlight is going to be with some flash gits yellow. Now this is going to be focused primarily on orbs. So for this one, for instance, it's going to be right here in the center. And we're not going to do anything with this surrounding area here. And then same with the orbs like here and the orbs along here. It's just going to be a dot at the very center of each of them. With that yellow all dry, all of the airbrushing is complete and most of the glow effects are also now completely finished. The only thing left to do is to give the actual weapon a quick edge highlight using some warpstone glow and then some moot green closer towards the center. So just don't load up too much paint on your brush and just come around and just paint all of these raised edges on the weapon. After the edge highlights of Warpstone Glow, just repeat the process with your Moot Green. Just be a bit more focused with this one and just aim towards some of the sharpest edges. With those edge highlights complete, you can see they're quite simple, but they really make the weapon just stand out. After finishing off the weapon, the last bit of green detailing is round here on the back. So we've got all of these inlaid details. So the easiest way to do this is actually with some oil paints. So we're going to get some white oil paint and then some green oil paint. And we're just going to run these into these deepest recesses here and the ones along here. With your oil paints ready, be sure to use a synthetic brush rather than your sable hair brushes and just load up some of this oil. Come to your detail here and just touch this in and it will run into all of those recesses. Once the white oils are dry, we're going to come in with a mix of a green and a yellow to make this nice vibrant green here. And we're going to just repeat the exact same thing. Once you are happy with your oil paints, you can see that we are left with this shine. Now the easiest way to get rid of that is that the oil paints are now dry and they're in the recesses. So we can use some of the thinner that we used earlier to thin down the oil paints and a Q-tip and simply make the Q-tip end here damp with the thinner and you can just run this along and because the oils are in the recesses, it will only pick out the parts on the top leaving your oils there and giving it a nice clean finish. With all of the green glowing elements completed, the final step is just to highlight up the staff of the weapon here. So this Necron symbol is going to be gold and then the weapon itself is going to be highlighted in some very dark blues so that we're going to maintain this black appearance just with some nice highlights on it. For this gold symbol, we have loaded up our brush with our gold and then wiped off most of it. And we're going to just come in with the side of our brush and just gently touch this raised detail, almost like a dry brush. And that way we're going to catch only the raised detail with this gold paint, leaving the backing black. For the black highlights, we're just going to take some Inky by Darkness. And now this is going to just be focused primarily on this area coming directly in front of us. So we're going to highlight up this cylindrical area here. And I want to keep the staff fairly simple and basic because I don't want it to take away from the actual glowing elements. I want that to be the viewer's main focus. So by keeping the actual staff fairly basic, the viewers aren't going to really look at that. They're going to be drawn primarily to here. So this Incubi Darkness has been thinned down to mostly a glaze and we're just going to build up these highlights nice and slowly on this central area. With those highlights built up, 
you can see that it is very very subtle but we have this nice blue highlight on our black stuff so with those black highlights all done the only thing left to do is base your miniature so it suits the rest of your army but this is your oracle and the diviner all finished Thank you all for watching, thank you for supporting Galloway Paints, and I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.